Has your doctor told you you need to start carboplatinum and you're wondering what is carboplatinum? Well, today we're going to talk about carboplatinum, what it is and who needs it. If that sounds good to you, continue watching. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Dupont, a board certified gynecologic oncologist. And today I'm continuing my chemotherapy series and we're going to talk about carboplatinum. It's one of the platinum type drugs. Well, carboplatinum is very similar to cisplatinum. Now, cisplatinum is kind of the older drug and very commonly used. Well, carboplatinum is also a very good drug. It's used to treat many different cancers. It works in a very similar way to cisplatinum because it's one of the platinum type drugs. They will attach to the DNA and form these adducts and prevent DNA synthesis, and that's how it kills the cells. Well, there's another platinum called oxaliplatinum. Those are kind of the three most common we use in the U.S. I think there may be some newer ones coming out, but the three that we normally use will be cisplatinum, carboplatinum, or oxaliplatinum. And depending on your cancer or your treatment, then the doctor may talk to you about which platinum drug is best for you. Is best for you. Well, going back to carboplatinum. So carboplatinum is not as harsh on the kidney, so you don't need all the aggressive hydration. So typically when you're getting carboplatinum, it's usually quick infusion. It doesn't take all day like cisplatinum does. It's still given every 21 days or every three weeks, but can also be given weekly. Carboplatinum is, is um, calculated a little bit differently. So we do look at the clearance for how you know healthy your kidneys are in calculating it. So it's a little bit more specific in how we how we order carboplatinum so you don't need all that pre and post hydration that you need with cisplatinum. We also calculate the dose by using the Calvert formula and what that is is the dose is, is discovered or calculated by the target AUC and that's the area under the curve. Usually for most drugs it's anywhere between you know four and seven it'll depend on what your age and things like that and then we times that by the creatinine clearance and at 25 and that's how we get the target dose for your treatment. And again, the toxicity where carboplatinum is lower than cisplatinum. Some of the things that you need to know is that the nadir is about the same, about 15 to 20 days. So typically I tell patients, usually if your white blood count will drop with this medicine, it's usually within about 14 days or two weeks. So it's about 15 to 20, about the two week range. Typically when you're due to start the next cycle in 21 days, your white count is usually back to normal. But just so that you know, all of these chemotherapy drugs do, do affect cells that are growing rapidly, such as your GI, which is why you get nausea and vomiting, or your bone marrow cells, which is why you may have anemia, low white blood count, or low platelets. So they do affect cells that are growing rapidly. And we also will check, you know, your electrolytes, your hemoglobin, your kidney function before each cycle. Some of the common side effects with carboplatinum are again, myelosuppression or low white blood count. And you can also get thrombocytopenia, which is a low platelet count. You may also have the low magnesium like you did with the cisplatin. You can get allergic reactions. So those are common. Sometimes you may not get it with the first cycle. You may get it with subsequent cycles. So, you know, if you're getting allergic reaction, people may feel chest pain, shortness of breath. They may start having um, breathing or just feel really sick all of a sudden. You know, a lot of times that may, sign, may be a sign of a you know, a reaction to carboplatinum. Now, some of the cancers that we treat with carboplatinum are ovarian cancers, we'll, we'll treat uterine cancers, vulvar, vaginal cancers. Um, carboplatinum is, is used in many other cancers as well, but in terms of the GYN cancers that I treat, mainly it's, you know, the uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, the ones most common, but also vulvar and vaginal can be used as well. I did create a chemotherapy tip sheet, and if you're interested in that, you can get that in the link below. You know, over the years, patients have asked me questions about chemotherapy, what should I have at home, what should I take for common symptoms. So I kind of put a little tip sheet together, and it's free, and so if you're interested, you can check the link below. Well, I hope this is helpful for you. If you are interested in this chemotherapy series, just let me know in the comments below. I will put a video next on um, Paclitaxel or Taxol is another common chemotherapy agent that we use for ovarian cancer, but it's also used in breast cancer. So it's a very common drug as well. And we'll talk about that next. But if that sounds good to you, thank you for watching and, and share this with a friend or family member or coworker or anyone that you know that's getting chemotherapy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.